to the lecture series of audio and speech processing. In this video, we are going to discuss the speech production and perception process. So first we will discuss the speech chain. So this block diagram shows the complete process of producing and perceiving speech from the formulation of a message in the brain of the talker to the creation of the speech signal and finally to the understanding of the message by a listener. Uh, this uh, model was proposed by Dennis and Pinson and uh, they have aptly referred this process as speech chain. The upper half of this figure shows the process of speech production and the lower half shows the process of speech perception. So, in speech production, we have got different blocks like message formulation, language code, neuromuscular controls, vocal tract system. So, all these things we will discuss in detail in our subsequent slides. Similarly, we will also discuss every block in the speech perception process. Now, let us first discuss speech production. So, speech production begins when the talker formulates the message in his or her mind to transmit it to the listener via speech. So, the first step is message formulation. So, in message formulation, the speaker or the talker has a desire to communicate an idea, a wish or a request. So, he wants to express the message as a sequence of words. So, in the message formulation step, strings of words or text are formed in the brain of the speaker. Then the next step is utterance planning. This is otherwise known as language code generator. So, in the previous step, we have string of words. Now, this block, the utter, in utterance planning step, the text strings or the words are converted into phonetic symbols along with stress and durational information. It describes the basic sounds of a spoken version of the message and the manner. Manner means the speed and the emphasis on different words in which the sounds are intended to be produced. Then the next step is neuromuscular controls. So, to this block the inputs are phonemes with prosody. Prosody means the stress or the emphasis all those things the way of talk these things are included in prosody. So, these things are given as input to the neuromuscular control block. This block generates a set of control signals that, uh, that direct the neuromuscular system of a human being to move the speech articulators namely the tongue, tip, lip, teeth, jaw and vellum in such a manner that which is consistent which will be consistent with the sounds of the desired spoken message and with the desired degree of emphasis. Okay, so here the speech articulators will play a very important role. Then the next block in the speech production process is vocal tract system. So, it is the last step in the speech production process. So, here the inputs are articulatory motions from the previous step and 
this vocal tract system physically creates the appropriate vocal tract shapes over time to create an acoustic waveform that encodes the information in the desired message into the speech signal okay so here the output will be the acoustic waveform or the speech signal The end result of the neuromuscular control step is a set of articulatory motion that we have already discussed that causes the vocal tract articulators to move in a prescribed manner in order to create the desired sounds. Now we will see the main organs or the organs which are responsible for production of speech. So here the left figure it is the cross sectional view of the anatomy of speech production. So here see the organs those are involved start from the lungs and it ends on the lips as well as in the nasal cavity okay. And the passage includes, um, I mean, the palate, lips, tongues, vocal cords, nasal cavity, rib cage, diaphragm, vellum, epiglottis. All these organs are involved in human speech production. Okay, so here see the the uh, all the organs can be divided into three parts first one is vocal tract okay then is larynx then it is lungs okay now the vocal tract um, this vocal tract it begins at the opening between the vocal cords and it ends at the lips okay in an average uh, male uh, this uh, the length of this vocal tract is about uh, 17 centimeter okay and the cross sectional area of the vocal uh, tract is determined by the positions of the tongue lips jaws and the vellum and it varies from uh, 0 to about 20 square centimeter okay and this is about the vocal tract then the next thing which is involved in speech production is your nasal tract so the nasal tract see here something is written like nasal uh, cavity so yeah nasal tract begins at the vellum so see the vellum is here there is a flap like structure over here which is called vellum. So the nasal tract begins at the vellum and it ends at the nostrils. Okay. So when the vellum is lowered, so when the vellum is lowered, at that time the nasal tract is acoustically coupled with the vocal tract to produce the nasal sound of speech and here in the second figure it represents the simple view of speech production the sound sources are idealized as periodic impulsive or noisy and it can occur in the larynx or in the vocal tract okay now here i have shown one uh, waveform speech waveform and here uh, the sentence i mean the text mes messages should be chase okay so see how the waveform for this sentence will look like and the first part up to this okay okay the first word is should okay so the word should consist of three phonemes okay and see here sh is shown from this part to this part then should in should there are three phonemes namely sh uh and d okay 
So these phonemes are shown here. See, this is SH part, this is UH part, and this is D. And the complete part will be pronounced as should. Okay. Similarly, here uh, this part is for we, and then this part from here till here it is for chase. Okay. So the detail about about phonemes we will. Uh, discuss in our next video. Generally, the speech signal that is that is illustrated in this figure uh, can be. I mean, the speech is a waveform, right? Is a it is a physical waveform. Okay, so it can be converted into electrical waveform by a microphone, and further, it can be manipulated uh, in both analog uh, and digital domain using different signal processing algorithms. And after that, it can be converted back to acoustic form by using a light loudspeaker or a telephone handset or headphones or any such devices. And after the speech is produced and it is processed uh, or it is transmitted through the channel or it is transmitted through the air, then we, I mean the speech is perceived by the listener. So now we will discuss the process of speech perception. So these are this the, this blocks are involved in speech uh, perception. So this model shows the series of steps from capturing the speech at the ear to understanding the message encoded in the speech signal. So the mainly one um, like organ of the body no, ear that is basilar membrane, it converts the motion along the basilar membrane, and that motion is caused by the sound wave. Okay, so uh, that motion uh, in the basilar membrane is convert, uh, I mean converted to neural activity. So um, now a question might arise: you might not be knowing what is basilar membrane and where does it exist okay so basilar membrane is a st stiff structural element within the cochlea of the inner ear so see this is uh, i mean this figure it shows the uh, i mean schematic view of hum human ear and this part is your outer ear this one is middle ear and the rest of the parts are inner ear and this part is your cochlea Okay, and here uh, see some hairy structures are there inside the, this cochlea. Okay, so um, these are stiff structural element. Okay, and uh, this when I mean a sound wave um, enters the human ear, and you know we know the complete process of um, you know hearing. I mean in um, when the uh, ear ossicles are also involved, but the main organ which is responsible for converting the sound waves to or the mechanical waves to neural activity is the basilar membrane and which is there inside the cochlea of inner ear. Now the first step in speech production perception is the effective conversion of the acoustic waveform to a spectral representation. So uh, these are just some technical words that is used uh, to express the way our human brain works to perceive the speech. So the speech production is done within the inner ear by the basilar membrane which acts as a non-uniform spectrum anal analyzer. And it works by spatially separating the spectral components of the incoming speech signal and thereby analyzing them by what amounts to a non I mean um, uh, analyzing them which, which amounts to be a non-uniform filter bank. Okay. So this is just a technical representation of the things that happens inside the basilar membrane. So the input to the basilar membrane is acoustic waveform and the output is spectral representation.
Okay. Then the next step in speech perception is neural transduction. So, as I have already discussed the basilar membrane converts the acoustic waveform into neural activity which we consider as spectral features. Okay. So, in the next step this features um, are uh, you know uh, are passed through the block called neural transduction and in the output it is converted into distinctive sound features that can be decoded and processed by the human brain. Then the next step is language translation. So, from the previous block the output is distinctive sound features. Okay. So, in this step uh, there, there will be conversion of the sound features into set of phonemes, words and sentences associated with the incoming message by the language translation process in the human brain. Okay. So, whatever sound features will come, will come to this block uh, that will be converted into phonemes or words or sentences. Okay. So, that can, which can be easily understood by our brain or which um, we can say which uh, will be helpful in message understanding. So, the last step in speech perception model is the message understanding. So, here the conversion of the phonemes, words and sentences of the message is done and here the understanding of the meaning of the basic message is done. Okay. And it is done in order to be able to response, respond to or take some appropriate action. Okay. So, this includes the complete process of you know speech production as well as speech perception. So, see we have discussed in this speech chain we have discussed each and every block of speech production as well as speech perception. I hope you have understood the complete process and thanks for watching this video.